Hello everybody. Thank you for joining me today. Long time no see. <laughs> um, I'm really excited about the next series of Tuesdays with Grace. Um, I'm excited about the opportunity to show you the progression that you can take as a quilter um, on your quilting journey. Um, I'm starting here on our Q-Zone hoop frame with a domestic machine and I have my foot pedal down underneath and I'm going to use it today to quilt with. And I'm quilting my little um, cutie quilt that I made for the cutie frame. Uh, I always try to make a new quilt for each product that we introduce. And there's just something fun I, I, I like doing and I started that a long time ago when we started, uh, when when I came on full time with the company. I've been with the company forever. Um, I was um, on a lot of the flyers that we started out with and I was able to go to the shows with my brother and my mom and I have a sister Sally who went with me and we were able to go to the Houston show and we'd travel in a van every year to Houston and we'd talk and strategize and have a lot of fun and then we get there and we just got excited about selling our wonderful hand quilting frames. That was when we were just making hand quilting frames at the time. And so here we are today with machines and all sorts of neat accessories and hoops and stuff that I get to even go further and show you how to use. And I just wanted to share a little bit about that little history because it's kind of fun. And I didn't know if you all knew that that's what we did. It was a long drive down to Houston every year, but we would drive all night. My sister lived in Denver, so we'd pick her up and then we'd head down there. And, and my sweet mom, she snored like crazy. So they were long, long nights <laughs> in one, in one hotel room with all of us in there because we were family. <laughs> and we were packed in there and they're just like, oh, go. You get your headphones on or something just to block out all that noise. But love my mom, but she did snore. <laughs> um, anyway, um, I just, I have my, my little quilt on the frame. And I have used this quilt clip just because our floor isn't very clean. So just another way to use your quilt clips. And I've also said that if you don't have one size, you need another size because sometimes the quilts can get a little thick. So if you have the blue ones, maybe purchase a set of pink ones because they come in handy. And I didn't put the leaders on because I wanted to show you that you can use the hoop frames without the leaders. Now, as far as the continuum frame, you have to have the leaders, but that frame comes with leader claws. These hoop frames um, and the Q-Zone Queen, you don't necessarily need the leaders to use them. You just need to, if you're not going to use the leaders, you need to make your backing and batting wider and longer. And that is really important. Um, and Robin says, I can't wait to use my Cunique 19 and hoop frame. I'm excited for you. And what a cute little person that you have for your, your little Facebook um, icon. Just adorable. So anyway, you don't need the leaders necessarily, but you will be needing to make your backing and batting wider and longer. And it will act as your leader because you need that extension so that you can sew to the edge of your quilt. Without that, you're not going to be able to sew our quilt completely to the edge of your quilt. And um, so I, let me start with the design, okay? Because I want to talk to you about a little bit about design and, and how, I come up, how I come up with what I'm going to add to my quilt. Sometimes I really don't care because um, I make so many quilts that I can experiment with. But I know that for you it is really important um, because, you know, this is a hobby of love. And, and it, it's important for us to get to know what designs we're good at and expand our horizons. So I don't want to, like I told you, I don't want you to be stuck in this little box. I want you to experiment and I want you to be able to feel free 
to, to not be perfect. I, I'm not perfect, and here I am teaching <laughs> you um, some of what my tips and things of uh, free motion quilting. So just know that Carla makes her share of mistakes all the time. But you know what? I'm willing to share those mistakes with you so that you don't have to make those mistakes. So when I'm thinking of the design um, and how, what I want to put on a quilt, um, it takes me a little while. It's a little process. And I get out my notebook or my doodle notebooks and I'll look through them and I'll look online. Google is a great way to look and search for new designs and new ideas for designs to put on quilts. Um, and, and just look at other quilts around. But sometimes I really want to stretch myself, and on this quilt, I kind of do. So I haven't, it's been a long time since I've quilted a quilt using my home machine, a domestic machine, and, and the foot pedal. Um, way back when um, we started out with the hoop frame, I got to test it and I was testing it with a, a small domestic machine. And I have to tell you, it was a little bit of a challenge because we had the longer arm machines and I was kind of used to using those. It was a little different process um, and, and going back and learning how to use, but it was so satisfying to, to be able to use this domestic machine and quilt to quilt. And I can't tell you how proud I was to be able to prove that the hoop frames actually work and how much fun they are. So, so that was really fun. And, and now I get to go back and show you. So, so what I did is I have, and I did this before, so I kind of know the design that I wanted, but I just wanted to show how I come up with them. So what I did is I will draw just the block that I am going to be quilting, the design, or the pattern. That, that's what I want to call it, the pattern. The design is what I'm going to quilt in it, the pattern on it. So I look at this little kind of, it's kind of a pinwheel flower type situation, and it has the curve, and it has an opening. So, so I just drew these four squares and just figured out what I wanted to put in them. And, and that's what I'll do a lot of times. I'll figure out, I'll draw out my pattern on my doodle notebook, and then I'll start working on a filler or a design to go um, around it. And that's my process for a lot of things. Because I, in, we have a lot of meetings around here, and I doodle all the time. So I noticed that right here, my curve is coming. It's not all the way to the, the corner. It's coming in a little bit. And so I'm drawing my curve going this direction on this one right here. So I'm going to just use kind of the lines on my notepad and kind of come down. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just kind of to, to see what design you're going to work. So this one right here is coming up and around. And so I'm just going to do that like this. And then this one right here is coming this direction. And then the last one is coming this direction. So now I have my design. And if you can see that. Can you see that, Brian? <laughs> so shall I show them under here? Camera what for? Two? OK. I'm showing you what I drew, okay, right here. And we're going to try and kind of take a close up. All right, so that's my design. That's my pattern on my quilt. So then I decided, I'm just going to hold it right here for you. I thought how fun it would be just kind of take this curve and do it all the way around it. So I started right here because I didn't want to start here in the corner because I'd be going opposite of what the curve is and I didn't think that would look correct. So I started right here in this corner and I just did a little loop. And a little loop is very easy to do with your machine. And then I just kind of went back and forth and back and forth. So it's kind of echoing this curve from the center out. And now I'm just going to go up. Now I could stitch in the ditch in the curve if I wanted to, kind of come in this curve just to make it consistent. And then I just want to kind of keep going out 
and then keep doing that curve till I get to the end. And it's going to create um, kind of a spiral effect after it's quilted. Um, and just kind of look neat. So I did this on top right here. And so you can kind of see what the design is going to look like. Okay. So for my border and my sashing all the way around it, um, I wanted to stick with that curved theme. And so what I am doing for my borders and my sashing is I'm just doing this little um, spiral right here. And I'm going to come out and down. And I'm going to kind of mimic that curve. So I'm going to, I'm going to turn down and come up and make a straight line and then curve again. So it's, it's, it's a feather, but it's kind of a little different feather. It's a modern, I, I'll call it a, a little bit modern feather, more of a squared. But it's kind of mimicking that curved look. And I just thought, yeah, it's kind of fun. And that's what I'm going to put in my sashing. And I'm going to do six and my border. Now, my border, before you start quilting your quilt, have a border around it. The sashings aren't a problem because you're going to figure out your distance because it, I have my sashing all around my blocks and I have a little blue square and that's going to be where my spiral will be but this here will be where the feather will be. On your borders you need to measure and break them up so that they're going to be consistent all the way across. I did not do that. Um, I just put it on. Um, I should have done that, but learn from me. Just if you're going to put a design, you, it's really important for you to measure your border and break it up before you go to the frame to start quilting. I didn't, and I'm also using a no-no. I'm using a pencil to mark with because I wanted you to be able to see what I had drawn on there and, and traced with. So you can use chalk, chalk you can use Somebody sent me a tip that there's a, a marker or pen that she just uses her blow dryer on and it dis dissipates. So, so there are lots of, of tools, marking tools out there available. Use what you like. Uh, I just wanted you to be able to see uh, what I had done. So this is another thing that when you are quilting your border, you need to measure in a quarter of an inch. That is for your binding. So when you come, <coughs> come to the frame and you don't quite have it on, you know, really straight and you don't have a ruler that's going to fit up next to it so that you can measure across, our true cut rulers with the holes are awesome. So what you do is you lay the ruler down, making sure that the edge, and I'm just going to stand up here just really quick. Uh, let me show you right here with this camera. Can they see that? Okay, so I'm just going to move it across. I'm just going to show you how nice these holes will accommodate. So I'm just going to mark right along here, and that's my quarter of an inch all the way across. Nice. It makes it so easy, and you're just using the holes to mark. So another reason to purchase your true cut rulers, okay? So then, once I have that marked, then I know how far in, or how not to go past that um, marking because I, that is for my binding, okay? So you can see that I have right here, on this corner right here, I started out with my spiral. And shall I put the GoPro on it right here? So when I was you, making the spiral, I knew that I needed a little tail right here, kind of centered, and coming in and going around, coming back out, and another little tail that was centered as well. So I could have just made my spiral a whole circle and then added my tails to it. That, that's fine as well. Then I came out and I'm just starting to do my little feather design. So I'm just going to quickly show you um, how to get started. Now when you're using your, your machine, um, Start out slow, and it's a new design for you. Start out a little slower. Um, don't start out just moving as fast as you can because you have the marks. We want to keep our stitches as nice and consistent as possible. 
And so when you're pushing on your foot pedal or when you're deciding what speed, you, you need to kind of get into the rhythm of it. And you can adjust your speed and movements to get to your rhythm and you're and moving across your quilt. But start out slow and then as the muscle memory kicks in and you get more confident with your new design that you're trying to to um, sew a, a quilt across your quilt, then you can get a little faster. And, and then you won't have to mark as much. Um, because in this area, I don't know that I'd really mark, but I might. Uh, it depends on, because I, I hate to unpick. <laughs> so I don't want to have to unpick. So anyway, what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to come down to my little line. So this is going to allow me, this little stem right here, or this little mark that I made is going to allow me to, when I quilt my, my side, to come up in and then I, I'm just working on my corners. So I'm just going to go down and pick up my bottom thread. Now a lot of ladies, or a lot of quilters ask, why do I have to pick up my bottom thread? You do not want your threads hang, dangling down underneath and you're going to sew over them. And it just messes up the design on the backing. So pull them up, do your tie-offs, and you can do a little, couple of little needle, needle up, needle downs if you want in the same place. So that's what I'll do, and that's going to be my tie-off stitch. And I'm going to just barely move it and then come back. But if you do too many, you'll get a little teeny knot that's built up underneath, and you don't want to do that. So because the, the head of the machine kind of is hiding my design and everything, and I've got a few little shadows, I need my light bar. I'm, I'm telling you now, the light bar is, it, that's another one of those accessories. If you don't have, it really is nice and does make a difference. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push on my foot pedal, but I'm not going to start moving my machine very fast because I'm going to get into my rhythm. If I started moving it fast, my stitches would become larger, okay? so. Here we go. And I, lots of times I just want to use one hand. So I'm just going to start. And see, they kind of got a little larger. But I'm going to come to my point. I'm going to give it a little bit more gas. OK. Now I've done my little uh, spiral, okay? Now I'm going to go up and down, and I'm going to really try hard to stay in this area. You can see that my stitches got a little bigger because I was moving a little faster, so I needed to speed it up. So, you know, it, it might be kind of nice for you to have a little piece of fabric. That's why I kind of have this area, so that you could kind of practice and get into the rhythm. But as I go through the quilt, we're going to just see the progression. And that's how you grow as a quilter. My goodness, don't expect everything to be perfect. And yes, there are some quilts that I wouldn't like that and I would just go and unpick. But I want you to see how important it is for you to grow as a quilter. And you know what? It's something I can live with. But if you can't live with it, that's fine. Now I'm just going to kind of go up. I'm just going to kind of get in my rhythm. And I'm going to try to stay true to what I've, you know, drawn here, but you never know. Things could change. And what's nice is I'm going to show you the progression. Because <laughs> then next time, I'm going to bring on the stitch regulator. And then I'm not going to have to be so careful. Okay, 
Can you see that? Okay. So that's just one little area of my border, okay? It's only going to get better as I get my rhythm and my movements down a little nicer. But it's kind of, it's going to look really fun. Um, I'm happy with the thread color I chose. It's, um, I can't remember what it was called. It was called uh, Mango Salad. Um, it's got a lot of the colors, uh, a lot of the oranges and a little bit of the pinks and some of the grays that I have in the quilt. Um, it's not it's not too heavy that it's going to make it really hard for you to see uh, my pattern on my quilt as I quilt over the pattern, but it's just kind of fun. So anyway, I could keep going on this all the way across and down, but I wanted to kind of show you um, what it would look like with the design. So the next point I wanted to, to explain to you, and I'm just going to cut my thread right here. I, I would tie it off. Let me just do a little tie off here. Kneel up. I'm going to barely move it. Kneel down. Kneel up. Kneel down. And I just kind of let it move back and forth. And now I can just cut my threads. Okay. But I had a little, little tie off stitch right there on the end. And that's how you would do it. Um, I didn't move it, so I really didn't need to worry about bringing my bobbin thread up. Um, so I can just move on to my next area. However, I just wanted to show you um, how important it is to break your design on your quilt up. This is as far as I can move. So I can, I can kind of quilt these two squares right here, which I, I will, but it's going to make it a little difficult. So I really need to move it up that direction. So I'm just going to kind of pull it up just a little bit so I can show you how to do this one and this one. And then um, by the next one, I'll have my top border. And by the next um, time we meet, I'll have my top border done and uh, my first row so that I can just show you the continuation and the progression all the way down the quilt. It's quilting is so much fun and it doesn't have to be hard. And so all I'm going to do is just kind of um, pull my quilt up just a little bit um, in this area so I can just show you right here. And let me see if I can pull it just a little bit more so that I can reach all the way down. Now nope. I'm going to have to undo this one here. And with free motion quilting, it's not like the automation. Well, the automation allows you allows for inconsistencies as well. So all I'm going to do is undo this one right here and this one right here and just kind of pull it up a little bit more. Okay, and now I'm able to quilt past that mark. So I'm just going to put this on here. I'm running out of time. And I'm a real talker and I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so can move that across here and this right here. Okay, now make sure if you have a hoop frame that you clip all your little clips on. You will be moving across your quilt if you don't have them all locked in place. And lo and behold, um, you will come into a snag and it's not going to be pretty. Um, because um, you have ca been caught on one of those clips. And if you haven't already done it, <laughs> yeah, if you don't get those locks. So I always try to make a head count. And sometimes you probably see me on camera. I, I haven't gotten all of them done because I'm concentrating on speaking to you <laughs> and I forget. So anyway, um, what I'm going to do is kind of just pull a little thread out here. And I'm just going to come here to this corner. And you can see also that I tacked down my quilt. So I'm just going to do these two little squares here. I just want to make sure that I have enough space that I can clearly quilt them. And we're going to see how it turns out, see how the design works. So um, I, because I use the thread cutter, I'm thinking that my threads are going to be too short to pull up. So I'm not going to worry about that, but I am going to tie it off. So. I want to come down here to this corner right here, and I'm just going to tie it off. Oh, there's my thread. If I move any further, it's going to... And I don't want to move it too much. 
Okay. Okay. So let's get going and work on our design. So. And see, I'm going to kind of stitch in the ditch going back and forth to get to that area. Okay, so now I'm up to where I can do my other little loop, okay? So I'm going to make my new loop. And you can tell I used a double batting. You know I like the double battings. If you don't, you definitely don't have to use a double batting. I just like them. I like the look. And you can see I kind of went out of the lines, but that's okay. All right. So there's that design. Um, I will continue on down and across and work my way over. Um, I just want you to try new things. I want you to see, um, let me answer a few questions, okay? Um, what is double batting? It's two layers of, and Linda asked this, Linda. A good question. A double batting is two layers of batting, um, and it just kind of makes it a little fluffier. You can see that it's a little poofy in the designs, and I kind of like that look. Now, there are some quilts that you will not like the poof, and don't put the double batting on there, but I like that look, and I use double battings a lot. Um, I use it when I'm using the rulers, because I like it with the ruler work. I like to be able to have the variations in the puppy parts and the parts that I've sewn over a lot. Um, and Sandra asked, what kind of batting do we use? This happens to be a bamboo batting. It's very thin. Um, but I like um, several kinds of battings. I like wool. Wool is a heavier batting. Um, if, you are using, uh, if you're quilting a quilt that you're going to hang up for show, a wool batting and a layer of just bamboo is great because it, it gives you that half that you need to hang nice and straight and it's really nice. Um, Diana Torres, she's asking, do you use the same weight of thread for top and bottom? Yes, I do. Um, I use the same weight. I may not use the same color. On this one, I happen to be using the same color of thread. I just wound my bobbins with the color of thread that I was using. Now, it's, it's a question that a lot of people ask. Do I have to use the same color? No, you don't. But if your tension's not correct and you're using a light on the top and a dark on the bottom, you may get it pulling through. So make sure that you've got good tension. And April is asking, may I ask which machine and frame you are using? Yes, I'm using a, Ju a Juki 2010 um, Q machine, and I am using the Q-Zone hoop frame. Um, and you can notice that I don't have the table inserts on the Q-Zone hoop frame. Um, you don't necessarily need them unless you're going to be working from the back. Now, the carriage here has the handles on the front, and they bend down so that you can work from the back as well. And um, Case Scraps asked, for a domestic machine, what is a good size throat to use for the cutie frame? Um, I would say no less than nine inches. Now, the Juki, there are several machines that are nine inches or a little bit longer, up to 11 and 13, and those are great sizes to quilt with. Anything smaller than that, you will be shifting your fabric quite a bit more. Um, and just know that you can do it, but that is what, you know, 
you'll be doing. You'll be moving your fabric quite a bit more because you'll only have so much space to quilt with. And you'll have to adjust your designs that you're quilting to fit within um, the space of or the throat of your machine. You notice that I could quilt the border, but I had to adjust it up to quilt my squares. I couldn't quilt everything all at once. So I will be doing a lot of adjusting. So, um, and Vicki Lamar, is there, uh, is there any handles that you can buy to put on the baby lock jazz? Okay, so when you purchase the frames, the hoop frames or the cutie frame, it comes with a carriage that has handles. What you will do with your baby lock jazz or the domestic machine is you will put them on there's two parts to the carriage. There's a bottom carriage that moves side to side, and there's a top plate with your handles that moves front to back. So what you will do is put your machine on that top plate, and that's how you'll use it. And the handles come with the frame. So just know that you don't need handles. They come with the frame, and you're putting your Baby Lock Jazz on that top plate. If you if I can just go behind, Brian, I'm just moving behind. <laughs> I told him I wasn't going to move too much, but notice that right here, this machine is sitting on this top plate, and I have what we call sewing clamps that hold it in place as I'm moving it across. So um, that's how your baby lock jazz will sit. It'll sit right on this plate, and then the handles that come with the frame, the cutie frame has a little bit different handles than this frame here, but the handles come with the frame and that's how you'll move it across. It's as easy as that. So if you're, you know, if you have questions, give us a call. On um, next week or next time I meet with you, I'm going to show you the stitch regulator and how it works. So I'm, I'm doing this in steps and yes, Ellie, they are coming out with channel locks, and channel locks are which um, will lock either the top carriage or, or the top plate to your carriage in the bottom um, in place so that you can move either just side to side, but making straight lines. So yes, the channel locks are coming for the QD frame. I, I'll be excited once they, we have them, I will introduce them with right here on the program because I love to show you what's coming before anybody else sees it. So, so I just thank you for joining me today. And next time, I will show you the stitch regulator and how it works. And we're just going to progress on. And we're going to get to the 15-inch machine. And then we're going to end up with the 19-inch machine on the frame. But I just want to show you that you don't need a big room or all these accessories. You just need to have a passion and a love of quilting. So thanks for joining me today. I'll see you next time. And have a good week. Bye.